welcome to Balanced Health. I'm Shirley Rose and this is Joe Costello. You know, to build a proper diet, we first need to understand the building blocks of nutrition and foods. We've all heard that some carbs, fats, and proteins are good for us, and we've also heard that some carbs, fats, and proteins are bad for us, but which is which? Today, Joe will help us to separate the good from the bad, Joe. That's gonna be a challenge. Well, it's, it is, Shirley, and some of it's gonna sound so basic, but I'm just going to ask that people stay tuned and listen to what we have to say because I'm going to go to the end of my weight journey here over the past 12 months and then we'll start the story from the beginning as soon as I give them the end. My daughter, my oldest daughter Lee and I went on a, a uh, weight journey over the last year and combined we've lost 40 pounds. Wow. And neither of us were what you would consider heavy. We well, both Leah had was a, tall no, and slim. Leah had a washboard stomach. Yes. Um, but together we've lost 40 pounds. And the neatest thing about it is when I tell you the minor differences we made on a day-to-day -day basis to accomplish that, it might border unbelievable. Hmm. Well, I know that whenever you talk about weight loss diets, and we don't like to call them diets, but any kind of weight loss program, that really piques people's interest. And so you are going to want to hear what we have to say. Let's start off uh, by, by talking about the different classifications of foods. And I think we all know that, or is it true that all foods either fit into one or the other, carbohydrate, fat, or protein? Is that a true statement? Well, all foods contain calories. And every calorie is comprised of either a fat gram, a, a carbohydrate gram, or a protein gram. Oh, okay. So, and what you want to remember real quickly is that uh, carbohydrates and protein are four um, calories per gram. Fat is nine calories per gram. Mm. So right there, if you know that, but you're not, but you're and, you're and you're watching your calories, that's one quick conversion that you can use right away, Shirley. Hmm. Meaning it's four, that four, and nine. Meaning that if something has ten grams of fat and five grams of protein and five grams of carbs, that's ten times nine, which is okay. ninety, and then five times four, which is twenty, twice. So that whole thing would be one hundred and thirty calories. It's too much math for me, but basically, it's interesting that fat has what <clears throat> almost twice, more than twice as a little much. Little bit twice as much, and there's a God-given reason for that. But when you talk about counting calories. Uh, Shirley, it's amazing. Once you've counted something once or twice, and mm -hmm. you just get the yeah. memory, and it gets to be really, really easy. That's true. It, that's true. It's really not so so complicated. I know with Weight Watchers, for instance, you know, after you've done it for a couple of weeks, then you just kind of know. It really becomes, yeah. Um, in simple terms, what are the key differences between these three types of foods? Well, their functions in the body, um, carbohydrates. And all of them will have to kind of two different functions. One, that they perform in the bloodstream, so to speak, and the other, once they go through the metabolic process of digestion, okay? Carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, uh, are for immediate energy. That's why a lot of athletes will bulk up on starchy carbs the night before a competition, or even carbo load several days before the competition. Um, and that's used for immediate energy. Complex carbs, which metabolize slower in the system, uh, are used for more sustained energy and, and, and many other functions as well. Fat is kind of your stored energy. Remember, a calorie is a unit of energy. That's why I keep using this word energy over and over. <clears throat> uh, and protein is, is, is used primarily to build lean mass or lean muscle. And one of the keys to proper weight management is the relationship of lean mass to fat in your body. Hmm. Many people show the average American adult male, now this is an adult male, um, who weighs 200 pounds or more has an average body fat percentage of almost 35%. So that means 35% of his 200 pounds are fat, which translates to about 65 pounds of his frame is fat. Now is that good? It's terrible. Okay, that's bad. What, you what, want, you, should the, what should the ratio be? Below 15% of oh, really? your total body weight would be great. I'm not going to do it. Even below 20 or 25. My percentage is. Uh, well, now, the now smaller women, you are, the percentage is proportional. Absolutely. And women have a little bit more? Well, a little more is tolerable because they're going to be smaller frame. They're going to be smaller weight in general. Okay. So it's the number of pounds of fat that you're carrying. An example we just gave, 65 pounds of fat for men to carry. Oh, is, that's a lot. Is, it is. It's that's too much. But, but it's interesting that, because that that ratio, because I know with, with women, Women, um, you know, we're softer than men. I mean, we're more squishy. Is that why we that tend can be to have confused with lean fat? mass? Lean mass is more when you when you talk about something that's not lean mass, you're talking about weight that is in places that it shouldn't be, and it's therefore making it harder for the body to function. I.e., too much weight around the wrists, around mm -hmm. the knees, around the ankles. Mm -hmm. It's stressing out the joints. Sure. Too much weight around the midline. You know, it's actually pulling down the colon, stretching out the colon. It's disrupting your digestive process. So, you know, we have this fat and this extra weight. Uh, you know, it winds up being in the wrong places. Gravity's best friend is fat. 
it always goes yeah. downward. You know? uh -huh. So, whereas if muscle, you know, so more of a lean mass, and it's not that hard to accomplish. Interesting. Well, we're going to talk more mm. about that. We have to bring up the whole idea of low carb diets because, you know, Atkins, God rest his soul, you know, I mean, he, it was very popular and he made a lot of money, but he, he died fairly young, I, I understand. But anyway, what do you think about? About well, the, just to clear up the there real quick, uh, on Atkins' ice. death, is that was a, a head trauma. <laughs> he actually it? slipped oh. on ice. And and, uh, um, how, and how old was he? I, I, he was in his 70s. Okay. Atkins, I, should, I shouldn't throw things out like that when I don't have well, the Well, no, but that, that's fine. What Atkins <laughs> but, did do, he was a pioneer in understanding the relationship of the insulin levels in our blood and weight gain. The medical profession has not put enough emphasis. We've talked to cardiologists on this program. We've mm -hmm. talked to uh, enterologists on this program. And neither of them seem to be too enthused about the relationship of the insulin level in your blood. Atkins said, no, when your insulin level is in double digits, it's 10 or 15 or 20 or more, mm -hmm. uh, that's always a precursor to your glucose starting to get into the mid-90s and high 90s, which is a precursor to di right. diabetes. Starches and grains, modified starches, modified grains, so not true whole grains, are the single biggest culprit of this insulin booster. Okay. So low-carb diets are great as long as but you, the fact that you're not taking in a lot of low carbs because you're not taking in starches and grains, not because you're not eating vegetables and fruits. So we have to really clar clarify. clarify. And, and, and for a while, people just kind of lumped it all together. They right? did. For most people who are what I consider protein types, especially in the Northeast and, and the Midwest, uh, a diet that's high in lean meats, fairly lean meats, like buffalo, bison, chicken, stuff like that, and a lot of greens is something you cannot go wrong with, keeping Good. the starches and grains to a minimum. Well, I hope we have time to maybe talk about about metabolic typing a little bit later. But we're going to have to t t have a break, but this is a great discussion. And when we return, we'll get the skinny on fats. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Balanced Health. The skinny on fats.